Hey everyone, let me introduce you to my new watercolor travel plein air kit. I have a lot of different watercolor plein air kits, everything from tiny little Altoid tins with six colors to bigger 24 color sets, but this is the first time I've ever used one of these hard plastic palettes that opens up and offers so much mixing space. The plastic palette is a pretty cheap generic palette that you can find through most art suppliers. Um, I don't even think it had a brand name on it <laughs> and it was only a few pounds. The sketchbook is a Sea White of Brighton plein air sketchbook for watercolor. It has much thicker paper, it's different than their travel journal because it's spiral bound and I'm really excited to see how it performs and it's the first one that they've marketed as a plein air sketchbook which is interesting to me. I actually haven't seen a lot of companies do that. So for those of you who watch my videos regularly you know that I recently made my own watercolor sketchbook using fancy Arches paper and I still have that one but it's larger and sometimes I really like having a a small kit that I can take out for little hikes or just walks down the road, something really, really lightweight and small. Plus, I am a sucker for these A5 sketchbooks and I really enjoy working in this smaller horizontal format. So let's test both of these out and I'll talk about the pros and cons as we go. First things first, the palette is very lightweight. It's almost like a brittle, hard plastic. And my first thought when I unboxed it was, Oh my gosh, I am going to break this instantly. <laughs> I could break it with so little effort. But that said, the fact that it's so lightweight means I really wouldn't mind holding it when I'm using it. It has a thumb hole specifically for that purpose, and the majority of the palette can rest easily on the forearm, and there's even a couple holes in there for brushes, although I probably wouldn't use that. In order to keep things simple when I'm outside painting, I prefer to use a limited color palette. So for this palette, I decided I would choose 10 colors and use them only in the bottom half of the palette. I like the idea of using the upper half either for water or for the occasional gouache mixes. And then when I close it, I don't have to worry about any of the remaining wet paint dripping down into the other wells and mixing everything up and getting muddy. Now let's look at the sketchbook. Featuring heavy 350 GSM cold press paper, spiral binding, and a thick hardboard cover, this little A5 sketchbook is a bit different than what I'm used to. I've used several A5 travel sketchbooks over the years, mostly the Moleskin and the Sea White travel journals, uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one compares to those. You'll probably hear me referring to the differences as I go throughout this video. The paper has a nice tooth to it, has some texture, but it's not quite as textured as my Arches cold press. It doesn't feel as smooth as like the Moleskin or the other Sea White travel sketchbook that I've used previously, so I'm really looking forward to see how that texture shows through. To start off the sketchbook, I decided to use the first page for swatches so I can really see how the colors I chose will perform on this paper. For the colors in this palette, I decided to stick with a few different primaries and one green, mostly because I prefer to mix custom greens outside. The first color in the lineup is Sennelier's Neutral Tint. It's a staple of mine. I prefer single pigment colors, but this one is just so moody, quick spreading, and it's a really wonderful color for neutralizing everything or just easily adding some drama to a sky. Next we have M. Graham's Anthraconone Blue, my new favorite deep blue. It mixes so beautifully with everything and I can use it for really, really rich dark values. Next we have Schmincke's Ultramarine Finest, which is the smoother, less granulated version of Ultramarine. It's a really beautiful bright blue that is basically a staple of my blues. It's wonderful for skies, oceans, shadows, really everything. And the final blue in the lineup is Schmincke's Helio Turquoise, which is a vivid phthalo blue that is really wonderful for mixing bright turquoise blues and greens. And the only green on the palette is Daniel Smith's Diopside Green. 
It's a deep, heavily granulating emerald green that is a perfect base green, so just mixing in a little blue or yellow to get a variety of green tones and you're good to go. Moving on to the yellows, we have Daniel Smith's Hansa Yellow Medium, a warm, rich yellow that mixes nicely with everything. It's not cool like a lemon yellow, and I feel it just gives me more versatility with my mixes. Then we have one of my favorites, Schmincke's Yellow Ochre, a really earthy yellow with more opacity. I love this yellow for neutralizing my greens and warming up my browns. Next we have Schmincke's Potter's Pink. It's extremely heavily granulating. On its own, it's a very pale pink without much power, but added to other mixes, it adds so much character and I just love this color so much. It's a really, really good color for landscapes. The reds on my palette are not reds at all. <laughs> First we have Holbein's Quinacridone Magenta, a vivid bright pink that creates the most gorgeous reds and oranges when mixed with yellow and magnificent purples when mixed with blues. I seriously love this color and I find myself using it so much more than I ever used reds. And finally, my favorite alternative to red, which is Schmincke's Perline Violet. A very heavily staining, deep reddish magenta that is perfect for all my earthy mixes. I never leave home without it. So as I was doing these swatches, I was paying attention to how the paper performed. It actually accepted the heavy pigment as well as the soft diluted pigment really well, but there's only so much we can learn from swatches, so I think it's time to take this kit outside and really test it out. Okay, I am charging up my phone, just really quick, and I have my new sketchbook and the palette. And as I was leaving the house, I realized that I need to keep it flat because it's fresh paint. And if I tip it too much, it'll leak. It already started leaking a little bit there because I accidentally tilted it too much. So that's my bad. No, <laughs> it's fine though. Look at these little cuties. Oh no. Hey y'all, a virtual Sarah here. <laughs> so the first thing I noticed when I sat down with the sketchbook is that I love being able to utilize that spiral binding and fold it over. I can hold it much more easily this way. That's one thing that always bugged me about the hardbound sketchbooks is that when it's opened, you have to deal with that full spread. If you're holding it, that can get really tiresome. And if it's on your lap, you just have to make sure it's all balanced. So this is a really big convenience for me. As soon as I flip that first page over, I notice that the back side of the pages have a slightly smoother surface. And this kind of made me think that maybe they're not considered double-sided. Even though you could paint on them, it would be similar to when I painted on the back side of my arches paper and it behaved very differently. So for now, I decided to just use the back side of that first page for a quick practice sketch. I actually really like the texture for sketching, so next time I think I'm going to bring my 6 or 8B pencil and really take advantage of that texture. And now for the main event! <laughs> I chose this subject because it offered a chance for a really heavy wet wash in the pond reflection and heavier pigment application and dry brush in the foliage and the grasses. I have to admit, when I was setting up to actually get started with the painting, I felt a little bit overwhelmed. I think it's just my sea, getting my sea legs, you know, figuring out how to use this new setup because it is quite different than my old setup. And I was also kind of precariously perched on the edge of this pond with very little space around me. Like if something fell off the front of my sketchbook, it would have fallen straight into the water. <laughs> uh, but you know, that's, those are the situations I get myself into. So whatever I'm using has to perform. I decided to use the top half of the palette for water, not only because I forgot a water container, but also because I didn't really have anywhere else to put a water source. And it kind of worked perfectly. Um, and I even I didn't even need as much water as I poured into it. As you can see, all the wells are filled up. That's way too much water. But in the future, I want to use that area for either 
part of it for water and then another part for gouache because I love the idea of mixing watercolor and gouache. With the first few brush strokes, I noticed it was much easier to work with than the moleskins and sea white travel sketchbooks. The paper seemed to absorb the water and the pigment rather than just having it float on top like the others do. And this allowed more layering and I was able to get soft and hard edges where I wanted them. So to me, that is a huge benefit of using nicer paper is the controllability of your pigment. If you are using the cheaper stuff or paper that really is meant for everything but watercolor, um, those basic techniques become almost impossible and your experience suffers a lot. Which again is a huge reason I ended up making my own Arches sketchbook because I just wanted paper that performed properly. But again, within the first few brushstrokes of this painting, I was actually really happily, pleasantly surprised. And despite the fact that I was struggling to like mix my greens and just kind of get a handle on what I was painting, the paper was not the thing holding me back. It was my own skill and understanding of the scene. So that's actually what you want to have happen. You don't want the materials that you're using to be the thing that's making you struggle. For the pond reflection, I was able to lay down some clear water and then work back into it with pigment, letting it bleed and flow. And it was actually pretty easy to control that. I was very skeptical because that's one of the biggest struggles I have with those other sketchbooks. And it behaved as I predicted, which is what we want. It stayed wet for a good amount of time, which allowed me to add more pigment and deeper values when I needed to. And despite the fact that I originally was afraid of breaking this palette very quickly, <laughs> I was really happy that it was so lightweight because with all of this stuff balanced on my lap, um, in the past, depending on what I'm using, it can be just so cumbersome. And this felt so light. I felt so free to move if I needed to. And I just, I don't know, I just was, I kind of forgot it was there and I was just working quickly and um, just like really getting into the zone. So that is a huge bonus. All right, I'm gonna let you guys watch a little bit of the painting so you can see it perform and I'll talk to you in a minute. It's not my best work, but it definitely felt like a good first test on this paper. Overall, it was enjoyable to work with and it made me really excited to try out some other scenes. I may take it out this weekend for some urban sketching so I can really see how it performs with ink and wash. My final feelings about this setup is that I felt it was much better for watercolor than both the Moleskin watercolor sketchbook and the Sea White Travel sketchbook which they say is for watercolor, but it's, I think it's better for other wet mediums. Um, 
I just especially loved the really thick paper in this sketchbook and the absorbency. And perhaps the best part is the price. Here in Scotland, I can get one for around four to six pounds, which is maybe around five to eight dollars. So that's only 20 to 30 pence per page. For that price, I think the quality is excellent and the affordability of it means I'm totally fine with getting messy and practicing lots of different subjects in this sketchbook. The tape actually peeled off really easily, even though the page was pretty wet and it came out really clean. So that's a bonus. Definitely struggled with all those greens. It's been a while since I've done this out here, so have to practice more. You can see I added just a hint of white gel pen, kind of squiggly lines in the foreground just to give like a sense of highlight. But yeah, that's it. I really look forward to sharing more pages in the sketchbook with you guys. If you enjoyed this one, please give the video a thumbs up and I will talk to you all again soon.